The New York Giants have historically had the number of the Washington Commanders, but the Commanders are on a roll. Can the Giants, who host the Commanders this weekend, get their first win at MetLife Stadium? We're going to talk about that and more on today's crossover edition, Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders, coming your way next. You are Locked on NFL Crossover. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's edition of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL written in all lowercase letters to win $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. Price picks, run your game. And hello, New York Giant fans, Washington Commander fans. Welcome on in to Crossover Thursday edition here on the Locked On NFL Network. The New York Giants host the Washington Commanders on Sunday. The Commanders riding high, the Giants not so much, but we're going to talk about it. I'm Patricia Tanner, your host for New York Giants, Locked On Giants, and he is David Harrison who is the host of Locked On Commanders. And as always, David, my friend, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you. Always fun to talk to you. Wish we could do it more than twice a season. Maybe eventually both teams will have everything that they need and we can do a playoff crossover. Uh, Yeah, that would be nice. take Take what we can get. Yep. That would definitely be nice. But anyway, uh, David, we've got a lot to talk about as we get everybody ready for today, for uh, this weekend's show. Um, The commanders riding high. They're on top of the NFC East, but they probably have a few concerns, issues and whatnot that I'm sure you're going to talk about. So let's start with you. Tell us where the commanders are at this point. What's got you concerned, what the storylines are and so forth. Yeah, well, starting on defense, right? The the Washington Commanders defense has been very, very Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, You know, one week they have a really good game. The next week, not so good. And, you know, sometimes they string together these these two really good games. But overall, when you just look at the total progression of the Washington Commanders defense and the identity they kind of want to have, right? We heard all training camp, all offseason, all preseason, hunt the ball, right? That's what they wanted to do is get takeaways, turn the turn offenses over, get after the quarterback, do all these things. And early on, that really wasn't happening. Now, as of late, they've been better at taking advantage uh, of opportunities. Um, still not a lot of interception you know, production, but when the ball gets loose, especially on fumbles, especially when uh, offensive linemen are getting handoffs down in goal-to-go situations, uh, they're taking advantage of being available and being ready to pounce on the ball. And, and it's really something that spreads out across across the game, across across the entire team. Uh, there was, you know, earlier in the season, there was a really long play uh, by the Washington Commanders where Austin Eckler fumbled the football, and there was a teammate of his that was pursuing the play, wasn't just watching him run on the big screen. He was pursuing the play and was there to cover it up. Then, of course, you have the defensive fumble recoveries. And then on special teams, uh, most recently, just this last week, there was a fumble on the opening punt return, the very first punt return of the game for the Washington Commanders. Uh, Alameda Zacchaeus fumbles the ball, Jeremy McNichols, is one of three players. The other two players are Bears. He's the only commander's player that's there, but because you can see him kind of in posture, in position to make a play on the ball if one needs to be made, he's able to get on that ball, able to keep it uh, secure for the Washington commander. So again, I know we're talking defense, but overall that's kind of been the mantra. And because of that, Patricia coming out of that last Giants game, the commanders were averaging one sack per game. Not only were they averaging one sack per per game, they literally got one sack in week one, one sack in week two. Since then, They've averaged 3.3 sacks per game. So very, very, very much uh, an increase in their sack production. However, the flip side of this, right, the juggling high part of this is they're also averaging half a yard more in the run game. They're allowing a half a yard per carry more in the run game. And to some people, it's only half a yard. But if you're talking about 20 carries, that's 10 yards of total total space you're giving up. If that's that's a third and two, that might be a first down instead of a third or fourth and short. If that's a second and six, that might be a third and four instead of a second and seven or a third and seven. So those things matter. And those things, those things absolutely pile up through the course of a football game. So while you're happy with the pass rush production and the improvement there, you want to see that defensive front, especially that front seven, uh, get better at stopping opposing running games, especially a team that likes to run the ball as much as the New York Giants do. 
Although you might get a break with Tyrone Tracy, who's uh, in the concussion protocol. That's true. Uh, so Don't celebrate the injury for him. But you're yeah, absolutely- exactly. <laughs> uh, David, talk to us about Jaden Daniels. I mean, he's just been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know yeah. he's been dealing with the rib injury. What's the status on him? And what is it about the offense that they're running that is just that he's been able to take to so quickly? Yeah, Jaden, I mean, I think Jaden's going to be fine, right? Like, there were no major setbacks or anything. And watching him in practice and, and and watching him interact in the locker room, like, he feels fine, and he's going to be good to go as far as playing this game. Like, there's no there's no concerns, uh, you know, unless something freaky happens, knock on wood that it doesn't, there, there shouldn't be a problem there for him to go. And, you know, th- depending on which side of this last week's competition you, you're in with the Chicago Bears, a lot of Bears fans want to point out the 55% completion rate and say, well, that was, you know, one of his worst days as a passer. But then Washington fans want to point out the 300 plus passing yard performance, which is the career high uh, for him coming in, you know, in his short NFL season so far. And me personally trying to be, you know, as as even keel as I can be, I'm going to tell you right now that his last performance basically falls right in the middle for me because yes, it's a 55% completion rate, but there's also four drops and that four drop, those four drops, if you get those back, don't take it to 80% or 90%, right? But it takes it closer to that 70% mark, which is kind of the minimum of where most quarterbacks at least want to be. Uh, so, so that kind of improves thing, but then you love the yardage production. You love his ability uh, to, to freelance when he needs to. And I think you love the fact that this offense and getting to what makes him so successful with Cliff Kingsbury is Cliff Kingsbury isn't one of these coaches that says, hey, dude, we know that you have the athleticism, but we don't want you to lean on it. We want you to be a passer first. Every quarterback is supposed to be a passer first. That's that's across the board. But what the Washington commanders say is, listen, we'll work on you staying a passer as we need to. In the meantime, do what makes you special, right? Like we go back to week one against Tampa Bay Buccaneers before he played the New York Giants, and this dude took off. I don't want to say all the time because that's hyperbolic, right? But to be hyperbolic, he took off the entire game. Like he was, he was dropping back. First read wasn't open. He's taken off, right? And and Cliff Kingsbury basically described it as a rookie quarterback who's in flight mode. Like he's in survival mode. That's basically what he was out there trying to do. It's his first NFL game. You come to the Giants game, you see a little bit of a better quarterback. Week three, a little bit better. Week four, a little bit better. And he's starting to get his NFL legs under him where he's comfortable understanding, okay, my first read's not there. Let me get to my second. But at the same time, He's also punishing aggressive defenses that are bringing blitzes or that are bringing consistent four-man pressures. And when they give him the opportunity to find lanes as a runner, he's taking them, but he's taking them smarter. He's taking them more efficiently, and he's also keeping his eyes downfield uh, and staying alive as a passer. And then there's no huddle. Patricia, I think that's really where the magic happens, right? The New York Giants saw it a little bit, but since these two teams have last seen each other, that no huddle percentage, the usage, the per, the usage rate of no huddle for the Washington Commanders offense has gone up about 15%. So that shows you how much more comfortable the Washington Commanders are in this no huddle offense. And, and the brilliant thing about it is it's a lot of brain power. So I'm told, right, that Tony Robo said during last week's CBS broadcast that it's really impressive that Jane Daniels is calling his own plays at the line of scrimmage. And, and I will tell you that Jane Daniels certainly has some control at the line of scrimmage. I would even say more control than most rookie quarterbacks do. However, when you're looking at this no huddle offense, this isn't Jaden just shooting from the hip saying, hey, guys, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. They literally, in front of us, actually, which is actually impressive, Patricia, you know this from a media standpoint, they actually, in front of us, practice their no huddle routines. That's what I call them, routines. They go up and down the field, eight, nine, ten plays. They have them mapped. They know coming into the game, it's this play, then it's this play, then it's this play, this is this play, and and here's the formations we shift into. So what looks like spur of the moment on the field is actually very well rehearsed. It's memorized, which is you know another part of that brain power. And in real time, Jaden Daniels and these quarterbacks are prepared to execute it, put their players in the right position. And again, go back to rookie quarterbacks, Patricia. How many illegal formations, illegal shifts? You know, how many of those penalties do you see on a weekly basis in the NFL? You've got a rookie quarterback memorizing a seven to ten play script of no huddle offense. And they're not getting these types of flags. They're not getting these illegal shifts or these 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 legal formation penalties. It just really shows you the mental capacity of Jane Daniels and what is helping him uh, accelerate his development so much in the league. You know, it's funny, David. Today, head coach Brian Dable of the Giants was asked about Jane Daniels, and you could almost hear it in his voice how he probably would have liked to have gotten his hands on him. Oh, I mean, he was just, yeah. just so impressed by Jaden Daniels and had so many wonderful things to say about him as both a person and as a quarterback. And truly what that young man has done in such a short period of time. I mean, you mm-hmm. got to think that he's a, a leading candidate for offensive rookie of the year. 
You got to yeah. think that, you know, that, that this kid, that the, that Hail Mary play is probably going to win, you know, at, at, at the NFL awards, it's probably going to win play mm -hmm. of the year. I mean, just, just amazing what he's done. Yeah. I mean, look, it's not an official award, but it's a cool award. He's got two Hemis, right? He's got two Hemis under his belt. Uh, he and Noah Brown won this week's Hemi, you know, for those who are, who are fans of the ESPN Monday night football broadcast. So, you know, uh, look, he's, he's doing a lot of impressive things. But he's displaying a lot of maturity very early on, which is is very rare uh, for for a player of, of his experience in the NFL. And you know, Dan Quinn says it's it's some of it's from his college experience. So I think it's certainly valid. He had to earn his starting job at Arizona State. He had to earn his starting job at LSU. This is a guy who's never been handed a single thing in his his entire career, and not for nothing, but he's also faced a lot of hatred in his career. He had a lot of Arizona State fans and even teammates turn on him when he transferred. And LSU very, very flatly said, dude, you can come here, but we're not going to promise you anything. Um, and there was almost a, an error of you're not going to be the starter from the outside of, of the LSU community. And then he comes in there and obviously does what he's able to do. So I think that builds a lot into it. All right. Giant fans, Commanders fans, when we come back, we're going to look at the New York Giants, the key storylines there. So please stay with us on this crossover edition, Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders. Hey, everybody, our friends over at Five Hour Energy know that being a passionate football fan isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. It takes a lot of energy to power through all day tailgates, touchdown celebrations, or an agonizing second overtime which is why they've created the Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with special flavor called Fan Fuel, the energy shot made just for super fans like you, the fans who are first in the parking lot and who are last to leave. We see you. You know what else gave me a bit of a Giants Fan Fuel this week? The Giants are inching up the draft order, currently sitting at number nine, which pushed them that much closer to being able to get their next quarterback without having to give away the farm. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're preparing for the big tailgate or ironing your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan 5 Hour Energy Shot is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with a 5 Hour Energy Available on 5hourenergy.com to ship nationwide. That's the number 5hourenergy.com to ship your order nationwide. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday. Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders, the Giants, the home team, looking for their first win of the season at MetLife Stadium. Hard to believe, David, that the Giants can't win at home. I mean, the, the home games have been anything but home sweet home for the New York Giants. And mm -hmm. I think we've got to start there in terms of, you know, the biggest storylines. You know, we've gone around the locker room. We've asked various players, what is it about playing at home this year? There's been such a struggle versus playing on the road. And a lot of people just seem to, to feel that, you know, at home, you know, you've got you just feel like you have to crank it up even further. And whereas on the road, you can kind of kick back. You already know that you're hated because you're the visiting team and you can kind of just take that, you know, the heck with it type of attitude. And I'm cleaning that up obviously, because that's not mm -hmm. what they said. So um, giants, you know, just don't play well at home. And, and here's an, an amazing stat. Daniel Jones hasn't thrown a touchdown at MetLife yeah. stadium until dating back. I think I want to say uh, against the Colts last year yeah. so it's been a long time just the team it, it's a tale of two teams it's almost like a heckle and uh, a Jekyll and Hyde type of uh scenario for the Giants so the Giants offense just not very good but you know what is good the defense has been playing well all things considered for the New York Giants and I think that's where the Giants are going to have to win this game and you know we we've saw it in the past how the Giants have been able to shut down the commanders um but here's the thing. Uh, Jaden Daniels, according to Pro Football Focus, has only been pressured 36.7% of his passes. And mm -hmm. you know what? I expect that number to go up with this Giants pass rush with Dexter Lawrence, who's always a load to handle, with Brian Burns, who's fighting through injuries, but who, you know, is, is out there, Aziz Ojulari, who's been playing well in place of Kayvon Thibodeau. They've got to get pressure 
on Jaden Daniels, force him into making some mistakes, and also contain him in the pocket so that he doesn't escape, whether it be up the middle or you know to the outside or whatever. So the defense obviously going to be a big key for this Giants team. The question is, can the offense keep up with it? This is a Washington team that I believe is ranked in the top 10 across the board. Um, I think they're the number three uh, overall offense. I want to say they're number two scoring offense, um, number three rushing offense, I believe, and number 10 passing offense. Mm -hmm. The run game in particular is what concerns me most because the Giants run defense, and this is just hard to believe, again, because you have Dexter Lawrence in there, the run defense just hasn't been good against you know the last three opponents we've seen the giants just get gashed like crazy so right. in terms of storylines you know that's going to be a big big one to keep an eye on the lengthy injury report the giants have this this week there were 15 guys on the injury report um that's a concern some big names no tyrone tracy it looks like for this week because mm -hmm. he's in the con concussion protocol and can the giants finally get that win? can daniel jones finally start throwing touchdowns at home yeah, you know, it's it's really been surprising, Patricia, because, you know, uh, you don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, but you almost kind of look at it like last year, you know, the Giants scored 10 touchdowns on the ground, 15 through the air, four in the return game, four in special teams. So your offense scored 25 touchdowns uh, in, in 17 games. That's not a great scoring rate, right? But this year, they're actually on pace to score even, I mean, even less, right? Like they're actually on pace to do worse. Uh, and last year there were already a lot of, you know, we talked last year, there were already a lot of, a lot of rumbles and, and you know, the, the, the lowest scoring output in 2023 since 2017, which, you know, isn't, isn't ages ago or eons ago, but it just kind of shows you how rare it is to score that few amount of points in the national football league, especially when all the rules are kind of designed to have them have offenses, have the upper hand. So it, it's really kind of surprising just, just kind of how things have developed, even though there obviously is some talent there uh, with the giants roster. And yeah, you're right. Like, having tracy you know again we all assume he's not going to play because of how hard it is to go through concussion protocol in such a small period of time and he didn't even enter protocol until tuesday so like that's all you're already behind the eight ball uh, uh from a from a from a time standpoint that's that's big for the washington commanders like we're not gonna you know i'm not gonna hide from that from a, from a conversation piece but at the same time i think the key in this element and i think that's part of to be quite honest with you, like that's part of the reason that sometimes Washington Commanders teams that maybe were viewed as more talented than these Giants rosters yet still came in and got their butts kicked and, and weren't able to execute is because they bought into it. They said, you know what, we are supposed to beat these guys. We are supposed to be better than these guys. And and we and and sometimes teams say we're not going to hide from that fact that we're better than you. But the key is, even if you're not going to hide from the fact that you're supposed to be better, quote unquote, you can't come in the in the end with the aspect of our reputation is going to score points for us because that's never going to happen. You have to come in and say, we're going to come show you why our reputation says we're better than you. That's how you win these games that you're supposed to quote unquote win. And when you look at the Washington Commanders team who's leading the NFC East division, you know, Jane Daniels starting to get some MVP whispers and and all these stuff, all this stuff, you should beat a team that's kind of in disarray, like this Giants team is. But again, it's the attitude that's going to get you there. And I think that this team has the right attitude. Uh Dan Quinn talked about that on on Wednesday about handling the stuff right that's kind of how he quote unquote put it is the stuff that comes with this game and sometimes it's bad stuff sometimes it's five interception games it's all these turnovers all these penalties that lead to seven field goals how do you deal with that stuff but also how do you deal with being the talk of the town and having a hail mary win and, and everybody's praising you and everybody's saying man this is a team of destiny and you can't be stopped like that stuff too right and how this team bounces back from that because you could very easily fall in love with your own your own press clippings and that's where, again, Jaden Daniels, Bobby Wagner, Zach Ertz, like these are guys who have been around the block. They've been praised and they've demonstrated that they had this mentality of being praised for week eight doesn't matter. This is week nine. None of that praise happened this week. That's all last week. That's all history. Um, and that's how you're going to beat a team like the New York Giants and not let them up off the mat, quite honestly, because that's exactly what you have to do is they're down. You got to kick them while they're there. This isn't look, this isn't hopscotch, right? This isn't friend circle. This is football. You got to kick these guys while they're down. That's what the commanders got to do this week. Yeah. And in terms of the Giants, they just got to play loose and remember why they play the game. You know, they've just been so tight. You know, they the mistakes, you know, last week against the Steelers, I think of their nine of their 11 penalties were on the offense and five of those nine free snap. That's that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely nice. crazy. And then that goes back to what I was saying about the Giants playing a little too wound up, if you will. 
So they just got to go back to the basics. Just go out there, have fun, say the heck with it. Just let it fly. Stop yeah. thinking so much. And I think that's part of the problem with the Giants, especially on offense, you know, especially with Daniel Jones. He just overthinks things and, you know, it, it, it trickles down to the rest of the offense. You just, just go out there, let it fly and, you know, see what happens at this point. You're two and six, you know, best case scenario, you come out with a win. If you don't, yeah. Oh well, you almost kind of have nothing to lose at this point. I think if exactly. you're if you're looking at the New York Giants, there was something interesting, Patricia. When I was getting ready for this matchup this week that I saw, and I thought that the, the, the Giants were, I think, from a coaching standpoint, are very smart to do. And again, it hasn't produced a lot of wins, so so it's hard, I think, for a Giants fan to sit back and be like, "Yeah, okay, it's smart, great, it's not working anyway." But like the New York Giants have noticed, there's an uptick, a significant uptick in four man fronts versus three man fronts and two man fronts. And and when we first when when we as the Washington Commanders beat first saw this Giants defense, it was mostly two and three man fronts, but not a lot of blitzing coming behind it. Yet they were still trying to bring four man pressure. So in essence, in essence, you're trying to disguise who's coming along with the down lineman, which is great, but you're not getting that type of, of force up front, and your run defense isn't going to be as great. Now you're bringing four down linemen and i think what that does is it helps prevent teams from focusing so much on dexter lawrence and maybe freeing him up for a little bit more i wouldn't say more one-on-one -on -one opportunities but maybe less triple team uh situations right like <laughs> even getting a double team on dexter lawrence like sexy dexy can still beat that up um so i think that's really smart and i think that switching switching their run game over you know with with the rise of tracy i'm trying to i'm trying to look it up here actually they they flipped from more, I want to say they flip from more zone runs to more gap runs. Yeah. If I have mm -hmm. the the flip correct, and I think that's incredibly smart because just what you said, play fast, right? Play fast and just get after it. Don't overthink it. And and I've talked to running backs who enjoy zone runs because there's more options. You have more opportunity to read the blocks, read what's happening on the field. Whereas a gap run, you either hit your gap or you bounce it. There's only two choices. And the team like this one, maybe they need those gaps. They just need, hey, dude, hit the a gap or bounce it outside. Hit the B gap or bounce it outside. Hit the C gap or bounce it inside. Those are your two choices. Don't think it about it too much. Just hit it or or bounce it, and and that could make things simpler simpler for the offense and certainly lead to some success, which I think Tyrone Tracy has been able to embody. Unfortunately, probably not this weekend. Yeah, and and to your point, Tyrone Tracy is still relatively new at running back, so he's still learning the finer points. Yeah. But you know, when, when given his opportunities, I mean, it's clear that he's overtaken Devin Singletary for RB one mm -hmm. on this team, but. Again, I don't know that he makes it this week. He was, uh, he didn't practice on, on Wednesday. He did do some work um, on the side with a trainer. So we think yeah. he's like stage three of the five phase uh, concussion protocol. A big day, obviously, is going to be Thursday. If he can get out there with the red jersey on and practice on a limited basis, then I would feel a lot better. But if he doesn't practice, then I would say, it's going to be Devin Singletary and Evan, uh, er, excuse me, Eric Gray for the mm. uh, for the run game, which, you know, it's not a horrible combination, but you kind of want to stick with the hot hand if you are the right. New York Giants. All right. Coming up next, folks, we're going to talk about the keys to victory as well as any last minute concerns here on crossover edition of Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders. Don't go anywhere. Today's episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you in part by our friends at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more, all on the very same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Listen up, renters. Ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments, just watching your money vanish into thin air? It's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use points to jet off to a dream vacation. Put your points towards a flight or hotel stay with over 500 airlines and over 700,000 hotels and properties. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, redeem them towards a future rent payment. Whatever you want, they're designed to meet your lifestyle. 
pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent gain just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest point value currency by the points guys and bank rate. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL. That's J O I N B I L T dot com slash locked on NFL. Joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL to start earning points with your rent payments today. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders, the New York Giants host the Washington Commanders on Sunday at MetLife Stadium. The Giants looking for their first win at home of the 2024 season. And David, let's talk about the keys to victory for each side. We'll start with the Commanders. Yeah, I think the three things that the Washington Commanders have to do is counter that Giants pass rush. You just mentioned it. Um, look, they're not blitzing a lot, but they're bringing four man four man rushes uh, a lot more often. Um, they're lining up with four down linemen a lot more often now. Sometimes maybe guys dropping back and, a, and an off ball linebacker or something like that is coming in. Certainly, some some things you can still do to kind of disguise those things sounds a little bit more simplistic. But when you have Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Dexter Lawrence. You can still kind of be simplistic and basically tell your guys like our best is going to beat your best. Uh, we're going to put your your quarterback under pressure. Um, left tackle position is a big question mark for the Washington Commanders this week. Brandon Coleman missed last week's game uh, with a concussion. He is in concussion protocol. He was able to practice on Wednesday. So just like Tyrone Tracy, like the big thing for Brandon now is Thursday. Can they get him out there full? If he has no setbacks from the limited participation on Wednesday, then hopefully Thursday he can go full. If you can go full Thursday, maybe get cleared by Friday, or they may decide to slow roll it anyway, wait to do the full on Friday, and as long as he's symptom-free, he'll be able to play. That's huge because Cornelius Lucas, the veteran left tackle that he's been rotating with, hurt his ankle last week. He didn't practice at all Wednesday. I don't think he's going to be available this weekend. So if Brandon can't clear concussion protocol, which there's nothing he can physically do about it himself, just to be clear, um, and Cornelius Lucas can't come back from that ankle, then you're looking at Trent Scott. And uh, I'm a big fan of Trent Scott. But he's your third left tackle for a reason. And your third left tackle on the right side of the Giants defense uh, is not going to be a good thing for Jane Daniels or anybody involved. So definitely want to keep an eye on that left tackle position if you're a Giants fan. Um, second thing, they got to find the end zone. We all remember it. Seven field goals. Fortunately, fortunately, it got the win last time. You can't you can't try to do that again. They tried to do it against the Chicago Bears and, and darn near got, got bit for it, right? You can't do that again. You like, like, no, like we can disrespect the New York Giants on the outside all we want. You're not going to be the New York Giants two games in a row. I don't think only kicking field goals. That would be uh, something that I don't think the, the NFL has ever seen. And then you got to contain explosive plays. Um, I'm going to go deeper in this on my on my Friday episode for Commanders fans. But bottom line is, what the New York Giants are the second lowest scoring team this season, but they're 11th in time of possession. So what that tells me is the Giants will actually run a lot of plays and mess up their own drives. They're essentially not going to get into scoring range or they're not going to get into the end zone at least, and they'll put up just field goals. So as long as you're answering those with touchdowns, you're going to be fine. Part of that reason is because of how much they run. Despite the fact that they're trailing by as many as much as they are, despite the fact that they're losing as many games as they are, they actually only trail opponent rush attempts by two. They're running the ball nearly as much as their opponents while they're losing the large majority of their game. Typically, you want you expect to see a much higher pass ratio from those teams. Um, now, part of that is Daniel Jones, fifth most attempts, rush attempts this year by a quarterback. So that certainly plays into this. But even with Daniel Jones, you would expect that rush margin to be much different. So it just kind of shows that this Giants offense is one that if you don't let them score, the number that I've put down is if you don't let them score in fewer than eight plays on on, on, a, on a drive consistently, you will be in position to outscore them at the end of the game. All right, sounds good. Now, the Giants this week will have a healthy kicker, fingers crossed, which they did not have there you go. when they when they met uh, the commanders back in week two. But for the New York Giants, key number one, they have to, have to, have to get pressure on Jane Daniels. As mm -hmm. I mentioned before, Jane Daniels has only been under pressure 36.7% of his dropbacks. The Giants lead the league in quarterback pressures. They lead the league in sacks. They got to get some of those. And against, you know, a compromised commander's offensive line, there is no reason why they can't at least get some more pressure than what Daniels has experienced. 
The second thing, and I mentioned this also at the top of the program, but I'll mention it again. They've got to stop the run. The commanders have, I think, the third mm-hmm. best run defense, uh, excuse me, rushing offense. The Giants' run defense has been terrible. It has been absolutely terrible. They've been gouged. And I think it's like three or four weeks now in a row that they have given up over 100 yards twice this season. They've given over 200 yards on the ground. We all know that with the commanders, I think averaging over five, I think it's like 5.6 yards per game. That creates a lot of short yardage situations. So you cannot give the commanders options on second down, on third down by letting them, you know, run crazy. So that's got to be a priority. And then the other thing, you know, people, my audience is probably going to say, ah, here she goes again with the Daniel Jones hate. But folks, it's true. Daniel Jones has got to start playing about the X's and O's. You know, we all saw it on Monday night. Daniel Jones throws with no anticipation. Daniel Jones, um, you know, in the big moments of that game against the Steelers, he had two opportunities to rise above put the team on his shoulders and carry them over the, the finish line. And he didn't. Yeah. And, you know, y- you just can't have that kind of play week in and we get at some point the quarterback has to rise to the occasion. And unfortunately he just hasn't been able to do that. Now, I don't know if it's because, you know, he's nursing something that they're not telling us. I don't know if it's a lack of confidence. I don't know what it is, but it's quite frustrating when you watch him play quarterback. And then you see some of these other young quarterbacks around the league or these more established quarterbacks, and you say, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to have that? So, you know, the Giants got to get better quarterback play. And then I'll mention one last thing, if I could, get turnovers if you're the Giants' defense. Mm. The Giants, I think they have one interception this year, which is crazy if you think about it. You know, look, special teams is not flipping the field for the Giants, not giving them advantageous uh, starting field possession. So why not get some turnovers, you know, Strip, get a forced fumble that you recover, get an interception, give the struggling offense a shorter field on which to work. And who knows, maybe that'll be just, a, you know, the kickstart that they need to, to get on some kind of a scoring run and play better than they have. Because if you ask the Giants to drive all the way down the field, they can go. They're fine in between the 20s, but we're, you know, the red zone, you know, longer fields. That's where the Giants fall apart, and they need to get better production, especially if they get down in that red zone. Yeah, I mean, I found a play, I think it was against Cleveland Browns, I think, if I'm correct, but they started on the opponent 30, so they're at the plus 30 when they get the ball. Eight plays later, kicking a field goal. You can't you can't do Ain't that. You can't do, do that in the NFL. You can't nope. do that in the NFL. Um, and you're 100% right, Patricia. The Giants minus three turnover differential. The Washington Commanders plus four. So if you can flip those numbers, uh, obviously Commanders fans don't want to see that. And I don't want to see I don't want to drive to New Jersey to watch the Washington Commanders turn the ball over all day. Um, but, you know, if you can if you can do that, if you're the Giants defense, then uh, that's what you can do. Look, in the, in the NFC squad episode, Patricia, I know you weren't able to, to make it because you're dealing with, you know, the short week after the Monday Night Football game. Uh, but Aaron Freeman of Locked On Falcons, for anybody who hasn't seen the NFC Squad show, at the end of the episode, I asked him for a bold prediction. His bold prediction was the Giants upsetting the Washington Commanders. So Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, look, in the past, the Giants have, have had Washington's number. I don't think Washington oh, – yeah. I think the last time Washington swept the, the season series was, I want to say, 2021. Mm. But for the most part, the Giants have had success against Washington. Then again, this is not your grandfather's Washington Commanders team. This is a much, much better team, a better quarterback, better coaching, just all around better. And, you know, you you can't, if you're a Giant fan, you can't sit there and say, ah, this is a gimme game. And it's not, folks. It definitely Mm. is not. But hopefully Aaron Freeman is correct. Remind me, I'll have to send him a, a, a thank you note after we're done taping here yeah. for picking for, for picking the Giants. But anyway, uh, folks, that's going to do it for us here on Crossover Thursday, Locked on Giants, Locked on Commanders. Please make sure you check out David Harrison's show, Locked on Commanders. He's got plenty of, of content, great content that he does a great job with. Um, he'll be wrapping up his coverage or pregame coverage tomorrow on his Friday show. And also please check out locked on giants. I have some stuff for you as well that I'm going to be rolling out for the Friday show folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, spending time with us today for David Harrison. I'm Patricia Trana, and we will see you 
on our respective shows on Friday.